Welcome, this is the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 7, Torque and Rotation. The section is 7 point J, Translation versus Rotation. Here you could read the scenario to yourself of what is happening. The first part is for you to label the forces on first the puck, then the wheel. Here it's given to you. Now the, the question is, is the friction force acting on the wheel? Static friction or kinetic friction? Explain. We know that for it to rotate, there has to be a coefficient of friction, but is it static or is it rotation? Or is it static or kinetic? What I wrote here are the notes for it. As a tire rolls, the surface maintains continuous contact but does not slide past each other. In this drawing, that would mean that the arrows would fall out of alignment if they did slide. This is static friction. It is when two surfaces that do not move re relative to one another. Right here, rolling without slipping. All right, A wheel will rotate with angular speed, omega. All right, And they say here, since the bottom point is always at rest, it is the static friction which acts between the ground and the wheel. Using the information from here and here as your notes, please explain part I. This is what I wrote. It is static friction because the wheel is rotating. At an instantaneous moment or during the rotation, the bottom point is always at rest compared to the incline. The two surfaces maintain continuous contact but does not slide past each other. That is the reason why it is a static friction. The next part. Explain why the frictional force on the wheel points up the incline even though it is not directly opposite to the wheel's translational motion. What I mean is that when it is on the ramp, there is a translational motion which is in this direction. Okay, This is what I mean by its uh, motion and this is what it means by translational motion. Okay, They say, why is the frictional force in that direction? So, use these notes to help you, all right? This is what I wrote. I wrote that the wheel is rotating up the incline. The angular velocity is going to go in a clockwise motion, labeling the angular velocity vectors at the bottom of the wheel where it touches the surface. The angular velocity is actually pointing to the opposite direction of the frictional force to the opposite direction of the frictional force, okay? So if you look at the, I'm gonna make the angular acceleration, angular velocity right here, all right? If it's at this point, it's tangential to the translational motion, so you should point this way, right? Because again, it is rotating what? It is rotating clockwise, okay? These are its angular velocity omega okay watch as i keep drawing it at this point it is pointing this way okay notice that the angular velocity omega it's deal opposite to the force of friction okay that's the explanation here all right part b both the car and the wheel will eventually come to rest at some point at the respective incline. However, the wheel takes a longer time and travels a longer distance up the incline to come to that rest. Explain why that is in terms of force. Okay, try to do that. So this is what I wrote. The wheel has a frictional force pointing in the same direction as the motion, like the previous problem. So the total acceleration of the wheel is greater than the car. So the acceleration here, so the A of the system is going to be greater, right? Is going to be greater than the wheel, than the A system of the cart. I would say so that the total acceleration of the wheel is greater than the cart. Having more acceleration right here means it's going to take more time to slow and tra and as a result will travel to a longer distance up the ramp. So if this is the ramp, right, 
and it has more acceleration all right it's gonna go up 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 if it has acceleration but let's say it has more acceleration right it's gonna go up a little bit more okay because the acceleration gives it essentially more energy that's why it's gonna take more time and travel a longer distance is because of that ACES. Where is that ACES coming from? It's supplied by the frictional force pointing in the same direction as the translational motion. Explain why this happens in terms of energy now. So this is what I wrote. The wheel has both translational kinetic and rotational kinetic energy at the bottom of the ramp. Here you go, and I'm gonna just label that for you. Yes. KR plus KT. As both object goes up, the respective kinetic energy gets converted to gravitational potential energy. So at the top of the ramp, it should have all UMGH. The wheel, the wheel will have more gravitational potential energy at the end because it loses both translational kinetic energy and It loses both kin kinetic rotation and kinetic translation, which is all going to be converted to gravitational potential. Okay. The cart, on the other hand, only has the cart will only have KT will convert to U equals to MGH. But again, this will have a higher H. You will get a higher H here because again, this one will go up the uh, ramp more why the explanation was right here remember the acceleration caused it to go it travels a farther distance so this will go up the ramp more higher h means more gravitational potential okay makes sense because the kr plus the kt will equal that mgh and the last one okay why on the incline does not include friction the car and the wheel has identical force par parallel acting on them directly down the incline. If we were to determine the frictional force of the wheel, which is 75% of the strength of the force parallel and the car traveling a distance L up the incline before coming to rest, how far does the wheel travel? Here's just a calculation. You're gonna see how far it goes, all right? Again, you're gonna be using some kinematics here. All right, so I said that the net force on the wheel is one quarter or 0 0.5 in decimal or 25%. That makes sense because right here, the wheel was 75%, okay? As much as of the net force on the cart. Therefore, since the cart and the wheel have the same mass, but the wheel's acceleration is one quarter as much as the acceleration of the cart. If you use this kinematics equation, the only reason why I use this is because that this has no time component. This is the only one that you can use, okay? This gives you the distance here. This is the kinematics equation that gives you distance, okay? It gives you distance with no time. If you set them to the same initial velocity and the final velocity is zero, because it makes sense because both objects are at rest at the top of the ramp, you will have this, okay? One divided by 0.25, it's going to be equal to four. You would see that the wheel will travel up four times. <laughs> I wrote it. The wheel will travel four times farther up the ramp. Okay? But it uses this kinematics. All right? But there you go. If you would like to read this for a better explanation, go ahead. But that's the shorthand. Okay? If you have any questions, let me know. But that is all your solutions for... Oh, hold on. I have these notes for you if you would like. Okay? This should give you the... Um, top of the wheel with moving and this is the velocity if you would like to know how the wheel velocities work all right but there you go those are all your notes and those are all your answers